God bless you and welcome to the Picture Tabernacle Church of Raleigh virtual Bible study and in-person Bible study. We are declaring that this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We are certainly giving God praise for this day that he has blessed us and he has kept us alive. Now we have an opportunity uh, to worship him. Yes, and we want you to know that we're glad that you are uh, tuned in with us. Certainly, if you get an opportunity to come and be with us in person, you are so welcome. There's nothing like being in the presence of God with the saints. Yes, we draw strength and we draw uh, a great wealth of knowledge as we share with one another the things that God has done in our lives. We want you to know that we are praying for you that God will continue uh, to uh, bless you and keep you. And we thank you for uh, your response that the word, amen, is yet uh, ministering to you. We want to continue to pray uh, for our nation and pray for our country that is in crisis. Yes, all that is going on, it is a praying time. I was thinking about it on today. I said, you know, Lord, you, you always, you are always on time. And that's why it's so important that the watchman has a connection with the Lord. He even warned the watchman that, you know, when he see danger on the horizon and he doesn't alert uh, the sheep that he'll be responsible for the blood. And then he also says that when we are alerted and we don't respond to uh, the call to heed, then the blood would be on our own hands. So... I, I never thought that in the few weeks that I had been um, praying and the Lord had been dealing with me about preparing the saints to draw nigh to him, draw, get as close as you can to him, to um, your, your relationship with him, show up your relationship, uh, batten down your hatches, you know, get ready because there are some things that are coming through. And, you know, sometimes when you know God speaks to you, you, it, it takes a boldness for you to stay on course. It takes a boldness for you to uh, not give in to the norm. Everybody else is talking about blessings and breakthroughs and all, and all that's, that's a part of it too. But there's something going on in this world. And the devil for sure is loose and he is determined to do exactly what Jesus said that he wants to do. But we don't have to worry about that. Because that's why we're in God's hand. He is taking care of us. And I'm just thankful for that tonight. So, again, we want to continue to pray uh, for one another. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight again for these, your uh, humble servants, Lord, that have come into your presence, God. And they are honoring your word that you have said to us that we should not forsake the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some have, God, and they've fallen away, Father. We thank you for those, Lord, that uh, understand the importance, God, of giving you your rightful place in their lives. And Lord, and we pray for others, God, that feel, Lord, that they can just linger on and they can just hang out, God, and, and they can just get what they need without honoring your word, Father. But we pray for them, Lord, that you would uh, have them to understand and feel the, the need, the, 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 uh, the, the intenseness, God, to honor your word and to draw closer to you, God, in every area of their lives. We pray for our sick, that you would send healing, God, that your healing power would be manifested in their lives, that they would be restored to their proper health. Father, we pray, Lord, for the bereaved, God, Lord, for the losses, God, of lives and the families, Lord, that are, Lord, that are grieving to no end, God, that sorrows has um, encompassed them about, God. Somehow or another, Lord, be only what you can be, Lord. Be a comfort, God. And, Lord, we don't know how you're going to do it, God, but we know you are able to do it, God. Lord, to loss of children, God, on a massive scale. The loss of lives, God, on a massive scale, God. Father, Lord, show yourself mighty. 
Show yourself strong, Father, in the name of Jesus. We plead for mercy for this nation, O God. Have mercy upon us, O God. Have mercy upon us, O God. Have mercy upon us, O God. Keep us, O God. Keep us, O God. Keep us, O God. Protect us, O God. Protect us, O God. Protect us, O God. Shield us, O God. Shield us, O God. Shield us, O God. Cover us, O God. Cover us, O God. Cover us. Oh God, awake our ministering angels, oh God. Lord, that as we travel, Lord, we will have road graces, God. Lord, as we go into these different venues, oh God. And that we would have, Lord, protecting graces, oh God. Our kids, God, in the schools, God, Lord. Road rages on the highways, God. Lord, we pray, God, that you would shield us, oh God, and protect us by your mighty power, by your mighty hand, God. Hide us, oh God, in the cleft of the rock, oh God. Hide us, oh God. And Lord, until that pass is over, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we'll just believe in you, Lord, again, to just comfort, to strengthen, oh God. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, keep those minds, God, Lord, that are falling apart, God. Father, we pray, Lord, in the midst of this, God, that you, oh God, would manifest your glory, oh God. In the midst of this, oh God, that men will see their need for you. In the midst of this, God, they will find, Lord, that the, that's a burden they cannot carry. Only you can help them to bear it, God. Lord, and they have you, God, to cast their cares on it, Father. Lord, help them, God. They can't wrap their minds around it, oh God. Lord, help them, oh God. Lord, there's no way they can make sense and understand what has happened, God. But you are able, oh God, to keep their minds. You are able, oh God, to settle their, ner their nerves, God. You are able, oh God, Lord, to hold them, God, Lord, and just secure their spirits, God. Father, we give you praise for that, oh God. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise because we know you're going to do it, God. We know, Lord, you're going to honor your word is not going to come back void. It's going to accomplish what we have sent it after. It's going to prosper in all the places, God. And we declare, Lord, healing God and deliverance in Jesus' name. Bless us now, Lord, as we go in your word, God. Help us to receive your word tonight. Mix it by faith, oh God, that we may be blessed in all our dealings and our doings, God. And then most of all, oh God, that we might be armed, oh God, forearmed, oh God, to be able to have the word, Lord, in our hearts, to use it against, Lord, the onslaught of the enemy, oh God. Father, we know the only thing he honors is your word. The only thing he respects is your word. The only thing, God, Lord, that can push him back is your word. Father, as we hold to your word, we know that he will flee from us as we resist him in your word. We give you praise tonight, Father. And again, bless those that are here. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So again, as we um, walk um, in this study, uh, and we're just giving God praise for the fact that we can have confidence in our crisis. God is encouraging us, and God is lifting us, and God is holding us, and God is keeping us, amen, in the midst of our crisis. And we begin talking about that in this crisis, uh, the confidence that we have in this crisis that we must understand that the God that we worship, we should put our confidence in the God that we worship. So many, uh, as things are happening now, they're talking about the laws and things that need to be passed and things that need to be done and bills that need to be put on the floor. But they fail to, want to understand one thing. What we need is the Lord. Amen. And not going to be in chariots, not going to be in horses. It's not going to be in the power and the strength of man. It's going to be in the Lord. So as we go to Psalms 18, we want to go back because somebody may be joining in uh, with us tonight. We stopped in Psalms 37 verses uh, 3 through 5, but we're going to read um, Psalms 18, which was our base scripture. And David says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer and my God and my strength in whom, will, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horns of my salvation and 
my high tower. In these three verses here, David again is uh, proclaiming his love for God. He says two things here in these three verses. He declares his love and also he declares his confidence in God, his absolute dependence in God. And we said that that's what God is calling us to do is to delight in him as we go to Psalms 37 and move forward. Uh, we must understand, amen, that uh, God is worthy uh, of our delight. In Psalms 37, verse 3 through 5, uh, he says, Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. We talked about on last week the importance of delighting ourselves in the Lord. And we said that we made it clear that this delight was something that you take pleasure in, something that you enjoy doing, something that you love, something that has gripped you so, amen, until it's spontaneous. You don't have to think about doing it. You don't have to uh, set an alarm clock. You don't have to have any uh, reminder of it. It's something you do. You know that there are things that you do that you, it's spontaneous. You do it and you do it because you know you need to do it and you do it because you know you love to do it. And this is what God is calling us to do tonight. God is calling us to a place, amen, that we will delight in our worship for God because he is worthy of that. And one of the things that when we talked about it on last week, we used uh, an inference about how it may be some dish we love to eat. I said, I like to fish. I like to hunt. And the list goes on. But the, the point that we wanted to draw out is something you delight in, something you love to do, something that you enjoy doing, you will always look forward to doing that. I need to say that again, because that's a valid, strong point. You look forward to doing it. You can't wait to get it. You can't wait to do it. You can't wait to have it. You can't wait to find it. So what, what are we drawing from that is that God is calling us back to where we delight in him. And one of the things that shows us what we really delight in is how we prioritize it. And this is what we need to come to the understanding of tonight. Where is God on our priority list? Where is God? Where do we place God? I can look around in this uh, sanctuary here and I can tell you not by judging, not by trying to infer anything, is that sometimes we don't have God high on our priority list because something that we enjoy, something that we love, something, amen, that we know that gives us pleasure in doing that we make every, take every opportunity and make every haste to do that. Look how we plan for vacations and look forward to them. Look how we lay aside resources to do the things that gives us pleasure and we'll make sacrifices for that. Look how that we give priority to certain areas of our lives. When it comes to paying our bills, what do we do? We pay them. Amen. We, 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 that there's no other choice. We feel there's no other choice and there probably is no other choice but there are some choose to pay them or not. But what I'm saying, we prioritize. We make that a priority. Have we ever thought about, is God high on our list when it comes to giving him what is rightfully his? Amen. We pay our debtors, but we are indebted to God. 
Do we say to ourselves the same way? I pay my bills. I'm faithful. I'm dedicated. Am I that way when it comes to what is due to God? Think about that. And don't be offended. What I say tonight, I say in love because God is speaking to us. You know, sometimes I hear, be sit here on Sunday and I look out and I see, you know, from the time service starts until 30, 40 minutes later, we straggle in. But we're to our jobs on time. Now, I know there's always something that, you know, for many, the sacrifice to get here is a sacrifice to get from work. You're in traffic. You're, we're not talking about that. We're not being that, you know, uh, foolish. But we're talking about the simple fact that when there's a pattern in our lives, when you, I look out there, the same people come late every Sunday. Amen. Now, we're not talking about you coming late. We're not talking that. That's not our problem. Our problem is how do God fit in the equation? Hey, we could be to work on time. Now, we don't come to church until 11 o'clock. Most of our jobs start 6.30, 7 o'clock, 7.30, 8 o'clock. And if you're working out in the research training apart, you leave an hour, hour and a half earlier, how far you live, to get there so you can be there on time. I think that God deserves that same place. No, 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 I don't think. I know God deserves that kind, amen, a place in our lives that we prioritize, amen, and give him what is due to him. And this is what God is saying to us that is so important because, see, when we, when we delight in him, sooner or later, it's going to pay big dividends to us. Amen. So God is calling us to, to, to think about, you know, uh, how we prioritize ourselves and, and the place that he plays, that he, the place that he has in our lives. That while we have that, Psalms 22. Then we're going forward from where we left off last night. Psalms 22. As we delight ourselves in him, God is worthy of our worship. Look at verse 3. He says, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praise of Israel, or inhabits the praise of his people. Think about that. You know, if you want to get God's attention, one of the sure ways of doing that is to praise him. If you want God to come and make his presence known in your life, one of the best ways to do that is to praise him. When they talk about that in habit, it has the connotation of one who comes and takes a seat right beside another, one who's in the vicinity, one who comes close to another. Another uh, a part of that word in habit, they speaks as a king, you know, comes before his people. He sits on the throne and he's there to make decisions. God, when we praise him, when we delight in him, he comes. And while we're doing that, he's making some decisions that are going to affect our lives. He's making some decisions, amen, that's going to turn some things around in our lives. He's making some decisions, amen, that's going to stop the enemy or the onslaught of the enemy or the traps that he's set, the ditches that he's dug, the snares that he's laid. God says that just us delighting in him to the point of giving him the praise that is due his name, he is doing something phenomenal in our lives. So we ended last week talking about the fact that we must learn, amen, that God is worthy of our delight. But then we said this week we wanted to look at the fact that not only at what happens uh, when we delight in God, but what happens when he delights in us. Let's get Psalms 147. Isn't this good? Yeah. 
And don't get upset. Uh, I'm not just talking because there's those that, you know, chose to, um, uh, I, I say this and, um, you know, when it comes to um, live streaming, you know, it has its advantages, but it has more disadvantages than it has advantages because it gives people an opportunity, amen, to, you know, just uh, say they're, they're not going to come. But that's not our prerogative because God said for us to come. Amen. It gives them uh, the, the, the advantage, amen, of just saying, well, I get the word. But there's something different about that. Amen. Because I know even when I, you know, go back and I look, you know, at the broadcast, and stuff, there's always something to distract you. You listen to the broadcast, the phone ring, you put it on pause, you talk to whoever you want to talk to. Now, maybe the Lord was speaking to you right then, you know, you know, you, 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 you go get you a cup of coffee, you know, and, and you sit there and you eat your snack. And, I, and I'm not trying to be uh, 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 legalistic about this, but I'm just saying that, you know, God doesn't have our undivided attention when we do those things. And then when we get in trouble, what do we do? We're looking for God to come to our rescue and come right then. Amen. Because there's no excuse, amen, for us not coming to the house of God. And we're not even meeting on a regular basis. Amen. We're not even having all of the services that we normally have. Our midweek services and our Sunday evening services and, and our Sunday school services. We're not even having all of those. And, and yet, but people don't find the time to solely Make God a priority in their lives. But let's, let's, let's see what happens when we do. Psalms 147, amen, in verse 10. This is what happens when God delights in us. We know what happens when we delight in him. He gives us the desires of our heart. He, he, he keeps us. He protects us. But listen what he says. This is talking about God. He delighteth not in the strength of horses. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord take pleasure or the Lord delights in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. Wow. Think about that. God is saying here, when you delight in me, I delight in you, and you have my undivided attention. Think about that. Think about that. The pleasures that we have as we enjoy the presence of the Lord and what we gain from that, what we experience from that. But now think about God saying, listen to what God said. He take pleasure. He rejoices. It gladdens his heart. Wonder how God feels when he really sees people that really love him and delight in him. And, and, and their expectation is always uh, to be in his presence and to worship him and to give him glory for what he has done in their lives. He says here, he says, the Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him and those that hope in his Mercy. Yes, God is saying here that, that we get his attention. Yes, when we delight in the Lord, he delights in us and he gives us his undivided attention. Let's get Second Chronicles. Chapter 16. What happens when the Lord delights in us? Verse 9, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Watch this. Those that he take pleasure in, those that he delight in. To do what? To show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Think about that. God says he's looking. 
He's anticipating. He's waiting. He's looking for an opportunity to see those that delight in him, those that really love him, those that serve him with their whole heart, those that make him their number one priority. I start to say how on their priority list. No, but making God number one in our, in our priority. Because guess what? If God is not number one, the rest of your priorities don't even, they, they don't even mean nothing. Because, you know, contrary to what we feel and think, and we have become, I, 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 we become molded in that mindset that oftentimes we just feel like that these things we are accomplishing ourselves, these things that we are doing them ourselves. And when we're not, the bottom line is everything that is happening to us, God is in the background. God is working behind the scene. God is orchestrating. God is doing things unbeknownst to us. Amen. And that, that we will be victorious, that we will be blessed, that we will come out, amen, on the winning side. He says here in this text, he says, for his eyes, his eyes are running to and fro to show himself strong on the behalf of those, amen, that put their trust in him. Those that are committed to the Lord. Those that, that really love him, amen, with their whole hearts. Think about that. Ezra, let's get Ezra. We're talking about when God delights in us, the benefits that we get. Ezra chapter 8. Ezra 8. Got it somewhere here in my Bible. Now I got to get to it. One of those times. Help me find Ezra. What? Now, I know I know where Ezra is. Isn't this good? Now, you don't have to worry. Told you, though, sometimes your mind just goes blank. Where's Ezra? That's what I thought. Yeah, this new Bible in my pages. Now, see, so you don't feel so bad, do you? Amen. Ezra 8. That's it. I should do what I tell y'all all the time. Sometimes that escapes your mind. Go to your index, you know, go. <laughs> Ezra 8, verse 21. Then I proclaim a fast there at the river of Ahava that we might afflict ourselves before God to seek him, a, to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horses, horsemen, to help us against the enemy in the way. Why did he do that? Listen to what he says. Because we had spoken unto the king, saying, the hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him, that delight in him, that has pleasure in him. But his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. So we fasted and we besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. In other words, he answered us. Now, here's a king, and that he, he's got a situation here that he needs help. But he's already declared that God was his help. He's already declared that if he or his people delighted in God, 
that God eyes was running to and fro and anything that they needed, that God would supply that need, that God would meet that need. But now he's in a situation that he feels like, well, it, it ain't really going to happen. And, 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 and he might have to go to the king. And he was a little bit weary about doing that because of his testimony of what he said. I wonder, is it that we have that kind of testimony? that we have that kind of faith in God, we have that kind of trust in God, we have that kind of confidence in God, that we will not allow ourselves to turn to, this is what the king was really saying, to turn to other means rather than God, to turn to others to help rather than wait on God, to turn to others for resources rather than uh, wait to see how God was going to work it out in his life. I don't know about you, but that spoke volumes to me because all time, what is the first thing we do? We don't go to God. Amen. We go to man. We think he got the answer. We go to man. We think that he has the resources. We go to man. We think that he had the wherewithal to do. But, but what our, our lesson is trying to tell us is that when God delights in us, we don't have to fret. We don't have to fear. We don't have to worry. We don't have to become antsy when it seems like things are not coming together on our behalf. All we want to do is to delight in God in our worship. He's worthy of our worship. He's worthy of our delight. And when we do that, make no mistake about it, God himself is going to take pleasure in us. God himself is going to delight himself in us. That word itself has, the, the, the root word has to do with one being bought up in luxury, one being pampered, one having everything at their disposal. And sometimes the world used the vernacular, one born with a silver spoon in their mouth. And this is what David was trying to get us to understand, that, that, that when God delights in us, then God pampers us. Yes, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about what we have in him. We're not even going to go to the extreme of what he gives us, but just simply what we have in him. And as I said Sunday, we take that for granted sometimes. Like we take our health and our strength for granted sometimes. Sometimes we take for granted, amen, the simple fact that we really don't, really don't delight in God like we should so that he can, or take pleasure in God like we should, so that he can in turn take pleasure in us. Not only what he is to us, but what he will give us. I, I say that's like the, 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 the uh, cream, you know, uh, on the cake. That's like the icing. What he is to us. He's our God. This is what we read in our first time. He's our rock. He's our defense. He's our salvation. He's our deliverer. And we've got to come to the point that we understand if we don't, we're going to start fretting. If we don't, we're going to start losing heart. If we don't, we're going to start fainting. If we don't, we're going to start doubting. But the thing that God wants to solidify in us is that when we do our part, he will do his part. When we delight and take pleasure in him and, and put him first, God is saying, then you are first because I, I'm looking, this, looking for that person. He's not looking for everybody. He said, I'm looking for the person whose heart is perfect. In other words, we're talking about you know, not that you have to do everything, dot every I and cross every T, but what you know to do. See, that's where we mess up. People say, well, nobody can be perfect and nobody's be No, 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 no. You're missing the whole point. What God is calling you to as it pertains to perfection is doing what you know to do. The Bible said he is righteous that does what? Does righteous. Amen. He is good that does good. So this is what God is, is, is calling us to and trying to get us to see. Let's go to Psalms 33. Think about that. 
I've been thinking about it because I said, all that's going on, Lord, I want to make sure, amen, that you are delighted in me or you are taking delight in me. Psalms 33. Let's go down to verse 18. Well, we'll, we'll go up to 16. There is no king saved by the multitude of an host. We learned that Sunday, didn't we? Amen. That whole host got swallowed up. And we'll talk about it this week. If the Lord should tear and we should live and be in hell. A mighty man is not delivered by such strength. And horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he, neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold, the eyes of the Lord, there they go again. The eyes of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that what? Hope in his mercy. Verse 19 says what? To deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive. Wow. Wow. Think about that. When God delights in us, what does he do? He delivers what? Our soul from death. Why are we here today? Why are we here tonight? Why is it that we made it through, amen, the COVID? Why is it that God has sustained us through, amen, all these other things that surround COVID? Not just COVID, but there are many other deaths that can come upon us beside that. But yet, for some reason or another, the word says here that God has done what? Kept us. Yes. Come on. He has delivered our soul. Not just our physical soul, but also our spiritual soul. And he has done what? Kept us alive in famine. He has made a way in famine. He has done some mighty things in famine. He has done some great, in other words, where there was lack, where there was need, where we didn't have the resources and the wherewithal to do whatever we need. I keep telling you over and over, God is trying to get us to keep our focus on. Don't keep worrying about the grocery prices. Don't keep worrying about the gas. Don't keep, I think my wife, she told me on this week or when was it, last week or whatever. She said, honey, I'm about to, you know, believe what you said. I said, well, thank you I, I, for that great confidence that you got in me. Ain't no use to ride never. We're trying to get a few cents off gas. Stop wherever you are. Put it in your car. Thank God you got the money to put it in there and keep it moving. Amen. Amen. We're not going to eating chicken feet and neck bones. The God that we serve is able. Amen. Come on, somebody. No, if I want me a steak, I'm going to buy it. I don't care if it goes to $24 a pound. That's, that's their problem, not mine, because I'm going to eat. See, now y'all, 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 y'all done got quiet. The, he just told us, amen, when there's a famine, people come panicking. Don't panic. Stand still over the, the baby formula. Those of you, if you listen to me, you got a baby, God will take care of you. God will provide. God will meet your need. Your child is not going to die, amen, from not getting enough milk. Amen. Amen. If you can't get a lot of store, give them some of yours. Either way, it both works. I didn't think I was going to get a response out of that, but anyway. You do have milk too, but anyway, Lord, keep my mind. Huh? But he said that he will keep us, amen, in famine. Go, go right to 34. This is very important. Notice he keep talking about God's eyes. God's heart, God's desire, God's will, God's word. These, when he talk about God's eye, these are the things that he's talking about. Amen. That, that, that his will for our lives, his word is trying to find us. Amen. His, his, his word is trying to do those things that, that, that God said his word will do. Listen what he says here. The eyes of the Lord are upon the 
righteous, those who hearts are to, you know, right towards him, those that who really love him. And listen what he says. And his ears are what? Open what? Until they'll cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord hear it and deliver them out of all of what? Their troubles. Good God from Zion. I'm getting happy already. The Lord is not unto these. This is what happened when you delight in the Lord. The Lord will turn around and delight in you. Listen what he said. The righteous cry and the Lord hear it and he delivered them out of all of what? Some of their troubles, part of their troubles, one or two of their troubles, financial trouble, physical trouble, mental trouble. No, all of their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are a, of a broken heart. Really have a heart for God. Really ha have a heart for the things of God. Really love God. And it goes beyond your head to your heart. See, that's what's happening with a lot of people. They say, I love God, but it's in their head, but it don't go to their heart. When it gets in your heart, you are serving. When it gets in your heart, you will do the things that God has called us to do. When it gets to your heart, you will obey God's word. When you get to your heart, you won't make excuses of why. Come on. No, it's got to get past our head. You know, I, I love the Lord, but I, I don't have to come to Bible study and did to prove that I love the Lord. That's foolishness. That's stupid. It is. No, you need that answer more. Come on. Your love for the Lord. Again, notice the priority. Notice the value we put on what we love. I don't care what we do to what extent we have to go. We're going to do what it is that we enjoy doing and get mad if anything try to mess it up. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. You go down there to that hotel and they tell you for some reason or another, I'm sorry, Mr. Perkins, but we don't, I don't see your reservation. You pleading the blood on your mouth right then. Cause you were looking to have a good time. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Lord knows don't get almost there and traffic backs up for 10 miles. You got an issue with that. Why? Because you want to get there and enjoy whatever it is you enjoy doing. But the least little thing will deter us from God. Amen. And get up in the morning, a little slight headed. Well, I ain't going today because my head don't feel good. See, so you done got real quiet. But listen what he says here. I know what I'm talking about. I don't been there. I don't sat right where you sitting, so I, I don't have no problem telling you about it. Amen. I mean, I I, I remember. I, I just go on and confess. I remember when I did. We had a lot of revivals, and I didn't want to go. I volunteered for overtime. Anybody want overtime? <laughs> Lord, I tell you right now. Uh uh uh. And especially we used to have shut-ins. And we had to start fasting, fasting on Friday, fast all the way to Sunday, you know. I'd get, and and I, I would just lie and make up work. I can't, I can't be that surgical. I got something to do. Now, see, now y'all just looking at me just as. <laughs> Normally, you got your stuff packed at work before five. Now you're still filling with papers, and it's quarter to six. You, you mosey on out in the parking lot. You're trying to kill that time until you can say, Lord have mercy, it's too late to try to get there now. I done been there, done that. Y'all ain't pulling nothing over on me. Come on. Come on. Look at the child. You feel sick? No, mama, I'm fine. No, but you look sick. You don't, let me touch your head. You don't feel good. No, we won't go to church tonight because I know it's coming on. I can, I, I can see it coming on. You, you know, we're laughing at this, but I'm trying to make a point. That this is the way we do the God that we serve. He's not a priority in our lives. 
But he says here, and we, we're done. He said, the righteous cry in the Lord here and delivered them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh to them that are broken heart and save such as be of a contrite spirit. Here it comes. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But what happens? That person that delights in the Lord, that person that God delights in, that person that take pleasure in the Lord, that person, amen, that God take pleasure in, that person that puts God first, that person that God puts first, that person that is looking how they are going to please God and how they're going to satisfy God, is that God that is looking in the same ways how he's going to do for that person. But he says he does what? There it goes again. Deliver them out of them all. Last but not least, Peter. I just love this. Where am I at? First Peter 3. We'll call it quits. There it goes again. I wanted to drive this home tonight. Yes, because God is worthy of our delight. And when we delight in him, he delights in us. Hmm. We take pleasure in him, he take pleasure in us. Now that was in the Old Testament. That brings us up to the New Testament. Verse 12, listen what he says. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. God's desire is over us. God's will is over us. God's heart is for us. God's resources are available to us. God wants to show us just how good he is. God wants to show us just how great he is. God wants to show us that what we can ask or think is nothing compared to what he can do. That's what God wants. God wants to shock us and awe us just when we think that we understand him, just when we think that we know him, just when we think that he has done something great and something mighty and something wonderful. God wants to come right back around and show us that that wasn't even nothing. Now, I, I, I don't know about you. I'm getting happy now to think about how many times God has done that in my life. Man, and he says here, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them. That what? And who is it? He that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good. Man, what happens when we delight in God? He delights in us. What happens when we take pleasure in God? He takes pleasure in us. What happens when we really love on God? He really loves on us. What happens when we want to be in God's presence? Oh, he anticipates being in our presence. What happens when we work for God? He's anxious to work for us. When we delight in him, he also delights in us. And he says he gives us what? The desires of our heart. Many people mistake that and think that he gives us whatever he wants and that has some truth to it. And I'm going to tell you how that works. You know why he says he gives us the desires of our heart? 
Because when we delight in God, we only want what God wants for us. And if God desired for us, guess what? And we desire, we're going to get it. Come on. Well, we only want God to do what God wants to do for us. Hey, you're going, it's, you're going to get an answer to that prayer. God is going to do that. Let's pray. Father, tonight we have tried to convey to your children the importance of delighting in you. For if we delight in you, you will delight in us. When we make you priority number one in our lives, you are looking, you are seeking, seeking, you are searching, you are waiting, you desire to show yourself strong, you desire to show yourself mighty. You desire to cause your word to be manifested in our lives at his fullness. Father, we thank you tonight that you are that kind of God. And help us tonight, Lord, to delight in you. Help us tonight, God, to delight in you. Help us to take pleasure in those things, God, that gives you pleasure. And Lord, if you do those things, God, we don't have to worry about you upholding your end of the bargain. We don't have to worry about you coming through with what you said. We don't have to worry about you doing what you said you would do. We don't have to worry, God, about you fulfilling the promises that you have made to us, God. Our main desire, God, is to delight in you. Knowing, therefore, God, you're going to take pleasure in us. And for this, we give you glory. And for this, we give you honor. And for this, we give you praise. Lord, and there may be someone listening to this broadcast or may be in this audience, God. Lord, that, you know, you're not even on their radar. You're not even in their lives. They feel like, Lord, the world and the fullness thereof, God, is those things that all they need, all that they want. But God, help them to understand, Lord, that these things are going to fade away. These things are going to perish and the only thing will last, God, is those things, God, that you've said they will last. And if you're that person today, you don't know Christ, you're not seeking after him. He died for your sins. He died that you might have life. He was raised from the dead that you might have it eternally. And if you're that person, pray with me tonight. Lord Jesus, tonight I understand that you need to be first in my life. I understand that. You desire to be first. I understand that I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. I'm a sinner. Can't help myself. But you died to save me. You died to help me. And for that reason tonight, by faith, I ask you to come into my heart, cleanse me from my sins, and save me. And Lord, tonight, I believe that I'm saved because you said if I simply call on your name and confess with my mouth and believe in my heart, Thank you for saving me tonight. And Lord, help me to grow in your grace that I might delight myself in you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I trust and hope that you've been blessed. Those of you that are live streaming with us, that uh, God is continuing to fill your life with his word, and his word is continually to change your life. I want to say to you, that are present. Thank God for you pressing your way and coming. And we say to you, God bless you. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will delight himself in you. God bless you tonight.